Oh boy, it's that time again, folks. Time to take an in-depth look at a champion and see just what kind of person would want to main them and how they behave in their everyday lives. For this episode, we will be looking at a relatively new addition to the League of Legends roster, but he has easily made his way into being one of the strongest lane picks of the recent season, and one of my favorite champions as well. Today, we will be taking a look into the life of a Jin main. This would be easier if blood came in more colors. I was really hoping that I would get some help. They're gonna do that dank baroon. Yeah, now they're a baron. Yeah, we both would have died though. I get nervous before. And I can do this. But I need that feeling. <laughs> oh my Woo! god! And he snipes it! Oh my god! <laughs> Now Jin's a pretty strange guy. He's into two things and two things only, art and murder. He's a serial killer who obsesses over perfection and tries to take out his victims in the most artistic way possible, leaving a disturbing display that would make any grown man recede into his trousers like an infant turtle. Of course, recently Jin isn't the most terrifying thing in League of Legends. Over the past few months, the good people over at Riot Games decided they were tired of ADCs hogging all the glory of the game and thought of a brilliant way to put an end to it once and for all. They decided not only to make ADCs sees not as useful as they once were, but to make them completely irrelevant to the game by introducing The Assassin Update Making it so that the only way for an ADC to survive in this day and age is to buy a goddamn Sonya's. But getting back to Jin, it's pretty obvious what kind of people would want to main this guy, right? On one side, we've got your typical art majors, who live in a studio apartment, gets offended if anyone has a different opinion than theirs, lives off microwave ramen, and who sleeps on a yoga mat because they needed to sell their bed in order to pay for rent this month. Can I flash fucking do this? Or am I gonna die to tower? My genius will be understood. Thanks, nerd! <laughs> And on the other end, we've got your edgelord supremes who are all black, tend to speak in riddles, write poetry, and tries to woo ladies with the tip of a fedora. First, let's get into the edgelords. Much like Reaper from Overwatch, Jin is League's mask-wearing, murder-loving, spooky-talking, smoking outside during lunch, outcast that everybody only makes friends with so that the next time he brings a gun to school, they have less of a chance of becoming one of his masterpieces. Now, as they may not be as salty as the typical Riven or Yasuo main, Jin mains have had their fair share of salty moments toward either their support or their jungler if they fail to set up the kills perfectly for them, or if they take it all for themselves instead. Jin is most effective at extremely long range attacks, focusing on avoiding any up close and personal interactions as much as possible, much like his mains who tend to do all their communicating and trash talking over the internet, having that safe barrier between them and the real world, keeping them nice and safe to avoid any real life consequences. And on the other side of the spectrum, we've got what I think is the darker side of the Jin main, the <laughs> artsy side. Now art is a strange concept to me. I can't look at an abstract mess of colors or a jumbled pile of broken wood on display in a museum and call it art. No, I've never been able to understand self-proclaimed artists and their views on the world. The only thing that I can see with artists is their gross, odd-colored hair, unshaven armpits, an incredible debt they owe because, come on, let's face it, they went to art school and have no real job to pay for the daily necessities like, well, soap for instance. You go to art school? What a fucking waste of time and money. What do your parents think, huh? But artistic vision is a required touch in a Jin main. Not only do they have skills with the computer from applying for so many jobs, they also have a certain positive aspect to make them less toxic to the League community. Yes, to avoid having their feelings hurt, they usually play with the all chat disabled, which in turn makes it so they can't be toxic to the rest of their team as well. Both of these personalities combine into one to make the ideal Jin main. Whether you lean more towards one side or the other, it's important to remember that we're all the same in one way or another. Yes, we all for some reason and keep playing this game called League of Legends that, whether you like it or not, consumes a great part of your life even if you don't think it does. Much like a parasite or an ex-girlfriend that won't stop calling you. You know, while making this video, it brought me to think greatly about my life and what aspects of me make up the champion that I main, and I've come to realize that I spent my entire college life studying graphic design and 3D animation, so, in a way, 
that makes me kind of an art major. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Sorry it's taken me so long to get another episode out, but I really feel like I'm getting the hang of what I want this series to be about. If you enjoyed this video, then go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button because there will be more. I'm going to be a little absent for a bit because my birthday is this weekend and I'm leaving for Vegas on a work trip, but I will be back in a week or two.